Ladies, what up, y'all? This is Sendo. Ladies and gentlemen, over 20 million albums sold. Keep those applause going. Wow. First Latino hip hop group to have multi platinum albums. Wow. They had two top 10 albums on the Billboard 200 at the same damn time. Facts only. We are starting to see now people who work in Congress are now starting to invest in cannabis industries. But when these guys first brought it up and talked about its medicinal purposes, as well as the recreational purposes, people laughed at them and called them outcasts. Early. These guys are prophets, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of people didn't recognize where they were from. Their sound was so universal, people didn't know if they were from the East Coast, the South, overseas, or the West Coast. Facts. They transcended Heather B. I just went and saw these guys at Kaya Fest not too long ago, mm. and I forgot how dope a Cypress Hill concert is. <laughs> this shit was so tight, man. I felt like a groupie. Took and they, your shirt off, sweat. I took my shirt off. off. <laughs> Sin Dog was looking at me. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. Don't do Ease it. Up. Don't. Ease up. Ease up. Ease up. <laughs> I took it off anyway. All right. And they got the new album, Elephants on Acid. They're here to celebrate with us today. Give it up for Cypress Hill. Salute, salute, Thank you. and salute. Thank you. It sounded very good when you said it. Yeah. <laughs> I could have kept going. I know. You that know, was awesome. Because uh, what happens is when I, when I see you guys, you, you, you know, we we've we been in this a long time, yeah. so I've, I've gotten older. And so uh, when I go back in my Rolodex of memories, I have to take it in eras. Yeah. You mm. know, and the era we came up in was just uh, hands there down. Was so much exciting yeah. shit that happened in that, those times, man. <laughs> it wasn't it, though? Yeah, yeah. It, it was all fresh. It was new. Yeah. Um, and that's when I remember when the first Cypress Hill album came out, and we were in the base, Sway and Tech, doing the Wake Up Show. And man, y'all don't, I don't know if you realize this, but you actually performed at one of our events. No, I, yeah, you remember, I remember that? that? Okay, yeah, so totally. we talk about this all the time. I like to repeat the same shit so people don't forget. You know that, right? We got history, baby. We got history. We got history. Yeah. We got history. Um, when, I wanted to play that clip because you guys got the Cypress Hill documentary, right? Yes, yes. And you're actually actively raising money for it right now. Yes, right? yes. Right through Indiegogo. Through Indiegogo. And how how can people donate for that? Well, they can go to the 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 Cypress Hill Indiegogo campaign and and it'll show you like the incentive packages and all that stuff that we're offering out to fans to be a part of the documentary you know we could have did it ourselves but we wanted to give a chance because we've always been interactive with our fans mm -hmm. you know uh -huh. what i mean mm -hmm. and we sort of got inspired by what de la soul did with their with their uh fundraise on their mm -hmm. album but we wanted to do it for a documentary you know what i'm saying so we're inviting our fans to you know be a part of that and, and and support that, yeah. what, what, what are you going to cover like um I mean, you guys really had to take a lot of y'all made a lot of sacrifices. You know what I mean? Yeah. You 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 know, you guys were sacrificial lambs, especially when it comes to the cannabis industry. What kind of stories are we going to hear? Like, were you jailed over this? Well, you know, it there'll be there'll be those stories uh -huh. on on how we were curtailed certain opportunities and stuff like that that other um, other artists got that we didn't get. Mm -hmm. Yet we had more success and more more notori notoriety and all that stuff, and you know you'll you'll hear the the original story from us from day one to now. You know we want to to give a story to the fans that they might not have heard yet. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying they've heard a lot of music from us. We've done a lot of interviews and stuff like that, talking about the music and what the music means. You know for each album and, and per song, but they don't really get to know the the actual story on our come up. Okay. You know what I mean? And uh, I think it's important to tell that after 27 years in the mm. game. At Go the top of the game. Well, uh, you know, we try to stay, you know, right around <laughs> there. You know, um, it's, a, it's been a roller coaster ride. It's some ups and downs, but, you know, yeah. mostly ups. Well, you know, keeps you doing it, you know. What, what, what was probably one of the most challenging downs that you had? Me? Well, I got, I got kind of like burned out, mm -hmm. like about, about after five or six years. Going really, really hard, uh -huh. and it just I had to take some time off, you know what I mean? Because I was doing crazy shit oh. and acting <laughs> weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, like, yeah, I remember those times. Yeah, was, wait, wait, <laughs> what, what's the example of acting weird? Like, okay. what's the weird okay. thing? It wasn't necessarily weird, it, it was he was, you know, on edge. So, we were going on <laughs> I'll, edge. I'll, tell, I'll, tell, I'll tell one story, you can tell another one. We're going to um, Europe and uh. 
Was this our second or third or trip? That Japan. Oh, it was Japan. Okay, no. Yeah, <laughs> that was, was another Japan? one. Sound like a well, lot of was, fuck ups. There was going two. On. There was a few. <laughs> there was two or three. <laughs> so <laughs> we're we're going to, to Europe or Japan. We're going overseas somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, he's in in this state of mind where it's like, ah, oh, man, I'm tired of this shit. This is uh, too much, right? And we all get on the plane, and. You know, somebody sees Sen walk towards the front of the plane where, you know, the bathrooms are, whatever, the laboratory, whatever the fuck they call it, right? And we thought he went to use the restroom, right? The door closes, and they're telling us we're about to taxi. Sen's not at his seat. We're like, is he still in the bathroom? (laughs) And it turns out he got off the flight. (laughs) We went off to wherever. We're like, I went home, shit. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You got off the flight? I got off the flight, man. I was like, man, just fuck this shit already. I just went home. And went home. Yeah, Yeah. Bobo and I were like, did Sen get back over this? Man. (laughs) He was doing this even before I really started playing with the group. Uh All right, I remember one time he called me up. He says, yo, uh, pick me up at the airport. I says, where's the guys? He said, "Uh, I just came early. He was coming from Japan or coming from somewhere, so I picked him up. So he he would do this this shit, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Early on, the tour was over when I said it's over. <laughs> right? Yeah, so, there was there was like three of those yeah. moments. There there was also yeah. Australia when we we went out there with Q. We were doing yeah. co-head. I had enough of shit out there too. I was gone. <laughs> he got just they, left. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, we, These guys would there you was know, like Bobo <laughs> Bobo would come in and rap my parts. So they they started uh, calling me. Uh, Come a day late, leave a day early. Send dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, yeah, the last the last week of the Australian tour, Ice Cube came in and, and filled in old Send Dog's parts. That Did was he? historic. If, if if people would have had social media back then, like those phones, like uh-huh. it, yeah. any, yeah. any sort of shit like that, this was before everybody was holding around handy cams and stuff like that. That would have been some history. He would have lent that would have lent itself to some good shit. But wow. either but you way, know, when you're young, man, you don't yeah. I didn't give a damn about anything, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. This was before kids and responsibilities. I only had this band was the only responsibility. And I got to a point where like, man, I, f- I honestly felt burned out. Like I would get all <laughs> nervous before like a tour. Like three yeah. weeks before a tour started, I'm like, you know, so if I didn't take that break back then, uh yeah. You know, I don't know if I'd be here yeah, now with y'all yeah. today. So, it, it, oh, it, you know? and we didn't take it any sort of way. We just sort of like, okay, you know, he's taking the time off. We're gonna keep this going till till he comes back. You know, because we're brothers, and and that's what we do. Just hold the weight down. Exactly. And and uh, when it was time, when he felt it was it was right for him to come back, but hey, the door's right there open. So, be real would come up my house like every six months, like get high with me, and then before he leave, he go, "Are you ready yet?" <laughs> and I'd be like, no, nah, not yet, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. So sure enough, he came back around, and it, they got me back, so it was good, you know. They, they never pressured you. Never pressured them. Never nah. pressured no, them. I'll tell you what it was. One day I was at home, fucking with my dogs and shit, right? And I went inside the house, got a beer, and they were doing a live show in Canada. It was a fe- like a festival it was outdoors. It was bright and shit, and the, they were playing. I'm watching shit on TV. And I could almost like smell the concert through the TV. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, I think I want to go do that again. <laughs> and then here we are. Yeah, and I'm watching. Yeah. I think Bobo was rapping my shit. And I'm like, damn, I got to get back, you know? So I, I, I made the move to get back with the guys and start communicating to, you know, get that all going. And, and what was crazy is we'd do a part of the show where we'd, you know, send shout outs to Muggs and Send Dog. Because at that point, neither of them were on the road with us. It was uh-huh. Bobo, myself, uh, uh, Esteban Orio from uh, Joker Brand Clothing, who is DJing for us, our homie Shag, rest in peace, and, and Duke from the Cycle Realm. They That's were right. traveling with the us. The Cycle Realm. And, and uh, we, you know, we'd say, you know, shout out to, to the homie Send Dog, you know, we'll see when he comes back, and we'd all start going, <laughs> doing the, <laughs> howl, howling at the moon noises to, to shout out to Tom. <laughs> 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 oh, hey, that was good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people thought y'all broke up. No, you know, no, we've we've heard that so many times throughout the 27 years that yeah. we broke up, but we never broke up. We just like took time to do other projects and and do us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he needed that time to decompress and and reset to come back into the fold. And I think we all needed that. Like I I went and did a few solo mixtapes mm-hmm. and a solo album. Mugs did countless amount of things and and Bobo as well. So it was all just sort of us doing us that didn't necessarily fit for 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 the band for Cypress 
but we all knew it, you know, after whatever we were doing outside of it, that we would come back to it because this is this is the root of everything we do. Uh-huh. And it's our passion. It's what we love. And we still love to get down on stage and rock the set together. And I think uh, when we record that, that vibe is there as well. So we're very competitive, yeah. you know, still on, to this day. On stage and in the studio. Oh, yeah. When we come, when we go do a show, if we're in a festival setting or we're co-headlining or whatever it is, we're coming to cut your fucking head off. Yeah. Everybody. We don't ever want to be number two. Yeah. We're coming to get that yeah. that, that cup. Yeah. You know Thanks, B. I needed to hear that. That's dope. Yeah. I want to <laughs> add to the icon status and the legacy because what I remember, just thinking back from the time I fell in love with hip hop, Run DMC, obviously, and yeah. that logo and what it looked like. Then there was Public Enemy. And yes. Then later on, you got the EPMDs. Yeah. And then you start to see Cypress Hill. You know, and that logo and and the merchandise. And for us back then, we didn't really even know how to capitalize off of merchandise. We didn't know what it was. It was just that as soon as you saw that PE logo or that Naughty by Nature logo, you knew. And I'm looking now, fast forward and 27 years later, you guys are still rocking the logo and representing in the merch. Yeah. Who created the logo? And then how did you know that it would become an international connection with, with the audience? Well, we didn't. I didn't know about the international part, but I, I remember one day in front of my mom's house, me, Muggs, mm-hmm. and B were talking about what we would do logo-wise or whatever. That's how it happened. Yeah, and, something like that. And we wanted to use... We were big fans of rock and roll, you know, growing mm-hmm. up, mm-hmm. like Kiss and Zeppelin. Seven, Iron Maiden. Iron mm-hmm. Maiden. And a lot of those guys used a lot of Use skulls, skulls in it, yeah. you know. So Which, we were influenced by those by that type of artwork. So we wanted to do something similar, um, but I don't think I ever imagined it being like a this big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't we didn't realize what it would become because you know we were just trying to be out of the box. You know, mm. um, a lot of uh, hip hop acts at that time, artists would put their face on the album covers, and the logos were you know more font based and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And, you know, we wanted to, to, to be obscure and not put our faces on the cover and, and, and put something more ominous. So we thought a skull like the rock, the metal heads do. Uh. And there was no no other icons like that in hip hop right. at that time. Mm-hmm. So we decided to to roll the dice and make that be our icon. And uh, we didn't realize that it would, it would catch like that. But... You know, it, it served us just like Iron Maiden had had different versions of the skeleton they call Eddie. Yeah. Right. Um, we eventually called our, you know, skull head green thumb and that that sort of took on the alter oh. ego. But, um, you know, it, it started just as a, the, the, the four arrows like a compass compass. Yeah. That's, and, yeah. And it and it symbolized, you know, us as men gonna go around the whole world with this shit mm. wow and you know fortunately you know it, 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 it took us around <laughs> the world, the world. Yeah, and, and, and what's it, what's crazy is that you mentioned uh the three groups that were the most influential to us um at the time which was run dmc the mm-hmm. pioneers of absolutely what we do mm-hmm. in terms of hip-hop because hip-hop you know had been there b- obviously before them yeah just in a different form mm-hmm. you know there was the, there was the more disco style mm-hmm. of rap shit facts and then you had Run DMC who flipped that game. They were like the, you know, the shit we looked up to. We wanted to beat them. Yeah. And then eventually, you know, the Beasties came out and we were about them. But EPMD and Public Enemy and Run DMC, I think, were our biggest influences. And, uh, you know, so we saw, just like them, that they had iconic type of logos, logos that, yeah. it, that that were embedded in your head. You knew it once you saw it. Oh, shit, that's Run DMC. Yeah. Oh, that's Public yeah. Enemy. UPMD. Yeah. So we, we wanted to be in that vein where you recognized our logo and it wasn't, you know, caught in, you know, this vortex of shit that, oh, you it's forgettable mm-hmm. yeah we wanted mm-hmm. to be you know more memorable and uh we felt like the the skulls and all that were so different that you could not forget that you know? cypress hill is here man for breaking that uh, down. new album yeah. elephants on acid you can uh get that now plus tonight they're performing at the gramercy theater at 7 p.m if you're in the tri-state area you know it's interesting hearing you speak about how you wanted the logo to be more upfront than your actual face because we're in the era of selfies right now you right. know right. <laughs> where everyone wants their face just plastered on as many screens as possible i'm wondering um did you also want the logo as like a little bit of detachment from the fame so you don't have like these radical stands who are solely obsessed with your surface Absolutely. You know, at the time we were uh, of the of the mindset that if you were 
obscure and mysterious and harder to get a you know a visual on or a hold of and, and not be seen so much mm-hmm. you know people wanted to to know about you more mm-hmm. so we didn't go to a lot of clubs once our album came out beforehand shit we were at every club <laughs> but <laughs> but once it came out yeah we we were only at the clubs if you were paying us to perform there we wouldn't go out we'd make people wonder where the fuck are these guys who are they right where are they at what they doing mm. and and these days you can't really do that because of the social media now these days you try to be a mystery you will become history you <laughs> know what i'm saying <laughs> oh, um, i like that <laughs> like that, yeah, yeah, that yeah, you like can that. have yeah. that one right Thank there you, every now and then i have these genius thoughts <laughs> uh, <laughs> pretty good sometimes. But, no but it, it you know because we're a, a of the mindset now is it's happening right now. We got to see it right now. And, yeah. it, and if you don't give it to them right now, they're going to look, you know, 20 different places for something. So mm. now people are, are, you know, instead of being obscure, they're being out front. Right. You know, yeah. and for groups like us, it's it's an adapt uh, an adaption we have to make, mm-hmm. you know, and figure out where is the middle ground for us being how we started and all that stuff yeah. now these days you can't be too obscure because again they'll forget about you so i think it's the yeah. quality versus quantity thing yes like the more that you're going to crank out content then you have to be seen but thinking about like a j cole yeah. a kendrick who they very rarely ever post right you know what i mean they right. have a form of obscurity in a sense but that's because the quality of the music that's right. put out once whenever you can have such heavier replay that's value. Ab- that's absolutely right uh cypress hill are here man can you give them a round of applause please thank yeah, you yeah thank Woo! you so uh, much I, I, i'm curious be real you were saying something because y'all sound from black sunday temple of boom uh cypress hill album the early first four albums kind of just kind of set you guys aside. That that was part of the reasons why people couldn't regionalize you because right. the sound wasn't a regionalized sound. That's right. Here we got these guys from Cali, but they sound like they could have been from the Bronx or right. they could have been Bro- um, Brooklyn. But I never really asked you about the evolution of your sound. And hearing you talk about how y'all record albums and you don't even listen to the songs until the final <laughs> yeah. version is mixed. How do y'all? How does how does that work? Because everybody mm. plays a different role. Like. Well, when did Bobo come in the studio? Like, what happens? Well, early on, um, when we started, uh, you know, re- recording, you know, Muggs was known to flip shit left and right. So you could start off with uh, laying vocals on one beat, and then maybe a month later, that vocal is on another beat. Same tempo, but just another another beat. And, you know, because he would he would try to find pockets that were different for us to rap in. So, like, if you listen to a song like Real Estate, mm-hmm. it doesn't start on a four bar or a f- or an eight bar where it's traditional verse mm-hmm. starts, right? It starts on a fucking six or seven bar, right? Yeah, yeah, some crazy stuff. Some like crazy that, yeah. ass off it's number off. of bars <laughs> that, you know, he had us come in on so that the flow rode a certain way on the beat. He did everything unconventional. And, and so, you know, we just got used to doing out of the box style, you know, recording. And, and we set our egos aside at that point and said, okay, we, we're going to be 100% with each other. So if it's not up to par, we're going to tell each other to make ourselves better. And, you know, we put our egos aside and then we'd not marry ourselves to the beat. Like I said, mm-hmm. we just be like, okay, trust in mugs to deliver in the end. And, you know, that, that was something that carried <laughs> on to us. Even in other sessions, you know, if I'm working on my album or, or, or somebody, you know, another group album, like let's say Serial Killers, mm-hmm. that just dropped yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't listen to none of it unless I'm the one arranging it. You know, if I'm not the one arranging it, I will step back, let them do their thing, and trust in their role. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I feel like, it, you know, with Muggs, we trusted in in him to bring, bring upon, you know, hip-hop, this crazy sound, that is his, you yeah. know, that, that that he puts it together. And he's always trying to do things that aren't necessarily going on right now in hip-hop. Mm-hmm. You know, like our sound right now for this album, you won't hear that shit with, with any artist right now. It's, it's well, you Yeah, know, it was I'm, crazy for, for, for me. When I got in with Muggs, uh, I did everything in like one day. He just played beats and I played on all kinds of stuff, not knowing what was going to end up where. So... I didn't hear anything until well, what I did until the record was like done. So, so how, how do you memorize your parts? 
Oh, you did. I'm, I'm quick. I'm, I'm, it, yeah. After we listen to it. I, I, I'm kind of quick in the in the studio as far as, you know, knowing what I'm going to do. But, you know, he'll just throw stuff at me and then we do a couple of takes and then move on. Then, and then move on. Your, your, your component to the group is very unique, especially in the, in the hip hop realm, you know. And I, and I mentioned earlier, and I thought it was important to mention that, and I don't even know if people realize it, because not only did you guys transcend regionally, we just thought, you know, we didn't. I thought Cypress Hill was black, even though I know you. You know, we just yeah. thought it was all the same thing. Yeah. yeah, yes. But then we learned about Latino culture and heritage and, and layers that we had never been exposed to. Was that important to y'all in the beginning? Uh, just to, it's important to you know people to know who we are, where we come from. Yeah, but not so much to that our our sound has to be completely just straight Latino Spanglish rap. Mm -hmm. You know. I think the Spanish stuff that we did on the first album were the last two songs we wrote for that record. Yeah. yeah. We we didn't care to be boxed in and be like a Latino rap group. We just wanted to be a rap group. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, our intention was never to be, you know, talking to you in a Spanglish way or whatever. You could look at us until we're Latino kids from L.A., you know what I mean? So, yeah. but it's very important that, you know, people knew that, you know, who we are, where we came from, and what we represent. So, you know, you could uplift, you know, kids behind you. And like if they got if those guys did it, we could do it type of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you know, at the time there wasn't really um, a Latino fan base in in terms of you know people that listen to Latin music, mm -hmm. traditional Latin music. There was no base there for a Latin hip hop group to sell records to, you know. And if you got that label placed upon you, you weren't selling records to the masses. You weren't selling records to the whole you know, um, of of people that were listening to hip-hop. They were trying to market you to, toward a Latin market that didn't exist. And we saw that, you know, through through his brother, Mel Man Ace, and through Kid Frost. Yeah. They had success in a certain area, and they thought, okay, well, we got some Latin rappers here. Let's try to market them in that direction because that's a whole new market. But that market didn't exist yet, and we saw that. And we we asked Sony to not, label us as a latin hip-hop group mm. just label us as a hip-hop group mm -hmm. all that shit will come out after we know who we are we know what we are we're proud of it but we're not going to exploit who we are because it's a new thing it's about the music and not what we are you know what i mean mm -hmm. it, that's that's the second to to everything you know when we did do the latin songs they were just like sprinkles sort of like the the cannabis stuff right yeah, yeah. um we got labeled as a cannabis group, although on every album there's only maybe two cannabis songs and references throughout. Mm -hmm. All the other music, you know, people sort of forget about, you know, all the, the issues that we talk about mm -hmm. throughout the album and stuff. So you get labeled and shit like that. And, you know, we didn't mind being labeled the cannabis group. What we did have concerns about was being labeled as the Latino hip hop group. Because, again, you would be in this box that you could not get out of, and then you're shelved, and then your career is mm -hmm. pretty much done, and then you're doing the car show circuits. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's no, dis and that's no disrespect to, to none of them, but, yeah. you know, we wanted more. You wanted to do more. Cypress Hill are here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the new album, Elephants on Acid. Um, where, where were y'all on the... Uh, this is all, you know, West Coast... Uh, uh, consciousness at the time of, I never really bought into the East Coast West Coast beef. Yeah, I, I, I personally never fed into it, never bought into it. The only way we saw it was through the media, because okay. when we we we've been coming here the twenty seven years yeah. that we've mm -hmm. been in existence as a group, and we never never felt any shade from any East Coast artists mm -hmm. or just fans in general. It, you know, they they made it more than than it, it was. Yeah, they perpetuated it in in. Um, you know, it it was a ridiculous time, man. Yeah. You know, because you needed unity at that time, as opposed to you know what was going on. Yeah, and the uh, the media was definitely feeding into that because yeah. we never saw that shit. And it was re ruining some milestone events. Yeah, like you couldn't mm -hmm. go to yeah. award shows. You couldn't yeah. go to parties, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no doubt. You yeah, know, something was uh was going to break out. Um, and then I gotta ask you, be real. If if have you you and Snoop. I'm just curious because when we was at Kaya Fest, man, I I start feeling good just sitting in the trailer, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. I know. And thank you for the big up on that. That was awesome, man. Oh, absolutely, man. man. Man, man, I, I I really I love you, dudes, man. I, we you, all we, we shared this history together, 
me and your family, like brothers, yeah, you know, yeah. Ron Markman. Um, uh, and I think it's just important, you know, that your story is constantly being told. And I also think it's important that just because Cypress Hill came out in the early 90s, uh, they will, on a stage show, burn your ass off the stage. Mm -hmm. It's tight. Where's Mike at, by the way? <laughs> Mike, uh, he's doing something uh, for the beasties out here. He'll, okay. he'll, he'll, he'll be behind the set tonight with us. He'll be behind the set tonight. Oh, yeah. He's... Okay. Yeah. He's, it, it's it's crazy doing the shows with him now. Like since you've seen the show yeah. from that time, much tighter. It's, it's lose. tighter it's a, than that. It's, oh, it's yeah. a different thing. Oh, it's now. a whole different get down. Yeah. There. How could it be tighter yeah. than that, dog? That shit was well, you tight. know, because those that that was like one of our first two shows with Mike, uh -huh. and we hadn't dialed in all the way. You know what I'm saying? And uh, since then, we've we've done a few shows, and and we got that shit dialed in. If you come tonight, you're gonna love that shit. You're gonna I'm, love that. Well, Mike is on the one. Okay, I'm going to go to these phone lines. 888-742-3345. You and Snoop in the smoke off, be real. Who will win? Oh, well, you know, that would be me. <laughs> That's never happened? He'll tell you that. Oh, he'll tell you? He'll tell you that. There's only two people that outsmoke him, and that was Willie Nelson and Dr. Green Thumb. Really? But he can <laughs> smoke as much as, as I do. That's that, You know, he can. It's just that I, I've been smoking more potent weed for a longer time. Than my man. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You but smoke more potent weed than Snoop. You know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is. I like Wiz Khalifa. <laughs> my man Wiz smokes too. My yeah, man Wiz. Wiz. I, I'll tell you what, in a power session, those two guys, if, if we did a, 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 a smoke box with those three, it'd be the craziest smoke box ever. That shit, you wouldn't even be able to see us. No yeah. red man would be in there. Red man, mess. Oh, red man, they smoke too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, that seat, not seat to do a smoke box like that. Yeah, I would have to get like a, a one of them, uh, one of them vans. Um, what do they call it? A, a sprinter van. A sprinter van. Yeah. And okay. GoPro the spin, sprinter van. <laughs> that would now that would be He's the smoke dope. That would be the smokiest box ever. You know, red meth. Wiz, Snoop, Snoop, myself. You. And we got to add Burner in there. We got to add Burner he's, in there. He's, he created a strand. He's the man. <laughs> man shout out to Burner. Y'all going to need a bus now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, we, yeah, we would need a the bus for that. Yeah. yeah, you know. Say it again. That idea is proprietary to Cypress Hill. Oh, that, okay, yeah, okay. that idea is pro pro proprietary, proprietary to Cypress Hill. I yeah, almost couldn't really invited me to do an interview in the smoke box. Yeah, you know, it would, you know <laughs> it would for, for a box like that, we would have to have Sway up in there. Interviewing us. You want me to interview y'all? I, 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 I need you, I need you to come. That? I need you to <laughs> listen. I don't know. I, I, I've interviewed many in this box, right? <laughs> yeah. I can't interview myself. You got to come do it. I got you. You got to sit in the driver's seat. Okay. And do it. I, I got you, man. I for you, be real. I I, I definitely got <laughs> you. Man. I, I, I thought to 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 do one where I'm, you know, the the edit is me sitting in the passenger seat as Green Thumb and me sitting in the driver's seat as Be Real and interviewing myself, but you know. Oh, that'll be dope. That's uh, too much. That idea is proprietary <laughs> to uh, uh, Cypress Hill. Yeah. All right, we got Kyle on the <laughs> line from Canada. Kyle, good morning. How you doing? Hey, Kyle. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Huge fan to everybody there. Thank you. Thank you. What's Thank your you. question? I was just wondering if uh, Be Real could touch on the exhibit Demerick Project. Yeah, yeah. Um, day of the Dead. It was supposed to come out today, but it came out a day early for whatever reason. Leaks and whatnot. <laughs> they still exist. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a it's a group called Serial Killers that uh, we put two albums out uh, for free a, a few years back, and uh, we just we we have this chemistry together when we record. So you know, we decided let's throw something down on Halloween. A quick, quick EP, seven song drop. You know, and uh, yeah, it's fun being around Exhibit. He's a fun dude, man. Yeah. Like, yeah, he makes he makes the mood light. Uh -huh. You know, he don't he he doesn't take himself too serious, and and he always makes the sessions like fun. And and uh, it's it's easy working with those dudes, real easy. All right, uh, we got Tim on the line. I mean, Jay on the line from um, Los Angeles. What up, Jay? Jay, Jay, Jay. Yo, what up? What up? What up, man? Yo, what up? Yeah, I don't really have a question. Just got a quick story about uh, growing up in the city of Southgate on Cypress Avenue with the homeboy Sand Dog and B Real and everybody from the block. Man, I just want to say thank you for everything you guys do. You guys put it down for the city of Los Angeles for many years since the early '90s. I remember performing in B Real's house one time uh, when I was a kid. Uh, he gave me a cassette tape with a hooligan beat on it. I rapped to it. 
never made it, decided to join the military, been in the military for 22 years because of that day. Right on. Wow. All right. Yeah, that's Salute. Crazy. Thank you. Right All right, brother. Thank you. Your story was getting a little sus until yeah, yeah, you uh, was, verified yeah. that tape. Yeah. 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 yeah, That's right. You caught that. You caught that, right? That's my job. That's my job, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Sin was going for the hang-up button, yeah, too. I saw it. was a little sus at first. Yeah, he was like, I don't know about this. Yeah, man. When he busted out that hooligan tape. Yeah, that was what he was talking about when he said hooligan. Hey, man, I want to thank y'all for coming through, for man. Yes, yeah, thanks for having yes, us. Yes, thanks for having us. You got to come you. back, man. Absolutely, yeah. man. Can, can, we, can, we, can we give you this? Yeah, we, we, what is we that? Wanna give you, we want to give you this. Huh? What is that, man? Oh, shit. Yeah. Don't, hey, don't, don't, get, don't, don't, don't get nervous. Excited. Don't get excited. nervous. Easy. I got excited, man. People was, get excited. It was green. I didn't know what it was. It man. is green. Oh, Limited edition oh. uh, Cypress Hill product. Go on, open, you know, it, open, it, open it up, open it up, come on, open it up, oh, man. I, I, this is like the holy grill. This is like what, what I got. It's a box. It's a black uh, Cypress Hill box. Go ahead, open it. Let me hold up. And then you know, you know, if you ever watch Indiana Jones and shows like that, they're always looking for the crystal skull. And because of the value, your Christmas is like you so open. And then I got a crystal skull. Yes, Cypress Hill. Crystal skull with uh with brains in is this brains with, in it? Yes. With some, green brains. Some green crystals. Oh my wow. god. Wow. With the crystal skull. Yeah. <laughs> oh my yeah. god. Hold up, man. Oh, okay, we gotta get Heather I B. Want one of those. Wow. <laughs> yes. Oh, whoa. Hey, hey. You hear that, Joe? We gotta get Heather B. one. Yes. Yo. Yeah. And Tracy G. Is that your strand? <laughs> yeah. This is beautiful. Yeah. That's uh, I think the That's Zookies. That's fly as hell. This I can't even fly. Front. In all the years. Gorilla glue, there it is, uh, mm. gorilla glue uh, crossed with cookies. So it's Zookies Jesus. for some yeah. reason. All the years, Sway and Tech have been on the radio. I swear this is the best gift. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Enjoy responsibly. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we hit a new bar. You hit a new bar. This is the best so gift cool. I ever oh, got. Dope. Bobo, I love you, man. Be My real. Man. I love you, love Sin. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Elephants on Acid. Get the album now and look out for the documentary. Backseat, car flow, no